that are so less uh, proposed uh, both the structure, it, it proposed a mid size and a large scale. Safe doesn't talk about it. That again, they have multiple tips, so you can use uh, based on your customization and so to get it uh, So uh, that's why I'm trying to make. So somebody asked this question just to uh, explain it. I work for uh, Test for Technology, which is basically an uh, Indian uh, technical, technical hub uh, for Tesco that you can dine out here. It's a very large uh, organization. Why you say uh, mid size? I'm talking about one of the SPU, which is general marketing online, which sells non food items uh, in Tesco and one of the primary uh, leaders uh, in, in that field. And how we could scale up uh, for vertical tracks and projects uh, uh, for that particular SPU. Right? Anything, anything in particular which you want uh, to understand or have any expectations? How is this different from working with multiple teams for yeah. different projects and okay. working with multiple I think you will get that answer. If not, I will uh, try to answer. Anything else? Uh, I'm sorry? Some of, some of those points are covered and then we'll talk across 
So uh, the primary reason is the repeating that in success embodying the large team across an organization. So the first parameter I would say when I want to go for scaling that I have only seen success with agile. If I'm not successful with agile, we should never think of scaling. Uh, that that's that's I will say a lot of line uh, if you ever follow. If you feel your organization has success with uh, five to ten teams with agile, then you can probably think about scaling it up, right? Otherwise, to handle multiple things, you can easily use from a from an right? Uh, team having multiple hierarchy levels for roles and functions, uh, which primarily answers the question uh, the next, that if you want to do a program or course of portfolio level scaling in agile, right? If you have been uh, studying Scrum and agile for some amount of time, we have never talked about till Dean came in with Save that how a portfolio or, or program will be handled in agile, right? You have always talked about Scrum teams, agile teams, and how we go and at the most, you have gone up to the level we are talking about from Scrum, right? We have never talked about how to handle a portfolio from the organization level, right? Uh, working involving multi technologies, so that's another, another point which I mentioned, which which uh, take me back that why we went for scaling agile. So if you see that we have multiple technologies working to handle this e commerce side, right? So it's required, required, and I will come why it's required. Applying agile thinking to cross product. Projects, so you have different products. We have project for those products. Then you need scaling agile. Apply agile and lean thinking to development organizations. So if you are already agile, you are doing Scrum for some time, and you have sort of quite matured in your process, you will in, uh, inject a bit of lean and Kanban over there. We have heard and, and been in a session in lean yesterday, and there are a couple of sessions today. I will touch a bit how we are going to use lean and how it's helping us. And transitioning from small scale agile to large scale agile, which we pretty much everybody said, right? That this, is, this is the higher level when you should start thinking of, of agile. Nodes are caution, I will say. Scaling agile is complex and takes time. So don't expect any overnight transition. It can't happen in, a, in, in two, three months or six months. You minimum have to do it for a year and a half. You can maybe actually say that I have been fairly successful with a scaled agile platform, right? Whether even if you're using, uh, by the way, uh, if I can quote some uh, data of, of from uh, the same being implemented. Same this has uh, catched up big way uh, in India as well. A uh, couple of companies, Delhi and Bangalore, are doing it. Uh, none of the transition is happening uh, before six months or year with, with very experienced, experienced coaches. Uh, there are reasons, as we'll see uh, when we go forward. Demand, discipline, general adaptions, and and cultural changes, top down approaches, and persistence. So these are the things that we have to have, right? I mean, if it's not discipline, you can't scale. Uh, uh, that's the reason. So. Uh, while uh, we say that we have to have a level of flexibility in agile, which is fine, we should talk about in the team level, but when you grow up and you scale, you need to have a certain le level of discipline and guidance that we need to follow, which we'll see. There's no perfect scaling formula, and that's why he said that you know you can scale uh, agile without even doing a, a save or, or a dad, but probably not in a very large scale, because for there we need to some prescription, and I will answer why we need a save or, or a dad or, or, a, or, or a SPS, uh, to, to scale it up in the next slide. Uh, standards perspective frameworks are definitely help because uh, if you're not into agile for one and one and a half years and you want to scale up pretty soon, those frameworks will give you the role and processes and, and a toolkit which you can follow straight away to scale yourself. Right? So you don't evolve with your learnings, right? That that can be uh, shared from there are several important success factors that the company should be aware when making the transition. Uh, like I was here, why, why uh, our, our division and our we uh, took a journey uh, to scaling. So this is a framework uh, for those who are new and did not understand that what the framework in the market. We have scale agile framework, which is safe, we have less, we have that, which Mark talked about it, and then we have called SPS, which is scale professional and Scrum, uh, Microsoft follows it, it's probably an extended version of Scrum. This is the framework that we have in the market. Uh, this also ties up uh, with the agile online uh, the scaling and it's pretty much correlated. So if you see out here, right, we all know what we do at this level, which is basically the team level, uh, the continuous development and agile delivery, right, build, refactor, TDD. Uh, then we sort of handle it with the daily uh, stand-up and acceptance that we do. As we move over, we go for an iteration and then we do a release, then we release. But how my my transformation or, or, or my movement uh, to scaling would handle this two area primarily. The release and the strategy, because that's where the portfolio or, uh, or uh, the program handling will come in. Right. The five dimensions of scaling. What dimensions you can scale, right? So uh, you can scale uh, for the team working on the same product, right? You can say product developed using Agile. You can also tell to bring up 
clear, agile maturity. And uh, you can also uh, do amount of business involvement that you have to increase and then uh, the departments that adopt agile. So you can scale agile in these different uh, five dimensions. So our motivation to look for scaling agile uh, in Tesco, and I have uh, Rishi in the room who also helped us in Rishi from Emerden uh, he helped us in, in this moment. Uh, but before Rishi joined us, our Emerden came as a consulting company, we have been doing Agile in a way, uh, somewhere other and which we further help from him before moving forward. So we used to do a three month release cycle uh, and able to respond to rapidly changing marketplace. We used to do three months plus. Uh, development cycle, uh, long to see the results quickly and exert more control over the cost. So it's because uh, the reason business leaders cannot cancel failing projects early, uh, lowering risk and potential risk. They've seen many projects in past which was not viable uh, till the time you get ready and then putting it into the market. Uh, we might have lost the leadership over there, but then couldn't cancel it because it was a slow. Changes in priority cannot be addressed immediately with minimal risk. All this can be handled in agile, but why you couldn't do it because once you have embarked in the journey of three to four months release where multiple teams are working across the product and multiple technology, uh, we we couldn't uh, take our immediate decision and put it see through and then before it's coming to a pause. Collaboration between the business leaders and development team did improvements uh, to build stronger relationship and team spirit. Uh, so once we have started uh, our journey for those releases for three, uh, three months or four months, uh, the engagement was missing, right? We had a product owner, we pretty much, pretty much talk about the product definition or the uh, requirement definition that we have already agreed for. We couldn't see where the business alignment is changing. And I can share uh, offline a couple of projects that we have done in vain, which couldn't give us good ROI, where we have worked for almost four or five months. Right? And that's, by the way, it's a very big time in an online space uh, if, if you were following e-commerce development. Avoid missing critical delivery dates and uh, uh, bring, bring in predictability. That's again uh, from Fragile. Quality problems due to the late integration and too much of dependency other system that can be managed. And it was not, we could go for a uh, scaling uh, to an extent because it was not a big leap for most of us. We were already following from as I said. It appeared the logical next step in our as elevation in that. That's that's that main reason I think that also driven us. So what uh, we used to do free scaling, we used to have 15 uh, scrum teams in 2012 in India. Uh, when I started with that, so uh, between various teams, uh, some of them were following scrum in a way, others were following scrum different ways. Release management teams to do a near traffic control and align teams output as every team had different sprint cycles. So if somebody used to follow uh, a particular start date and just print on a particular start date, uh, somebody will print two weekly, two weekly uh, sprint, somebody will print four weekly sprint. Then at the end of it, when we're closing to the release uh, of say three months, we will have two weeks of traffic alignment to make to ensure that everybody lands into the place and then we go for integration. We have to wait two weeks for everyone to align and do release after three, four months. Uh, Pre-release planning for two weeks so that uh, we can align everybody what's picked up, what's not picked up. No devs from team in UK, all rest of Bangalore. So there was no only business in UK. There was no uh, active participation in terms of from. It was all uh, requirement delegation. UX work primarily used to happen from UK, uh, nothing in India. So we have to depend for UX uh, as we call build kit or the package to get over in UK and come to us. There was a lot of context switching, handing over, understanding of the uh, UX and then move forward. UX and requirements was handed over to Bangalore team during release and sprint planning. So it was quite a realization and there was a lot of integration issue. Many integration and post-production requirement issues plenty. And so it was more like to a model which is below, which we can see as some more kind of stuff, right? If, if, if we understand, right? This is exactly what we used to do. We used to do a lot of uh, water defined project planning earlier. Then we used to do scrum in terms of our development delivery cycle different way, two to four weeks, and then we used to do a fall, the control production release. Right. So our agile journey for scaling, how we started, so we, we sort of scaled up from 15 to 25 team roughly, give and take, and across the different uh, stack which we'll talk about it later uh, to handle it. We moved to two release cadence, primarily fortnightly and and, uh, and monthly, and that's about it. Nobody else follows any other cadence, and all of these cadence uh, most of the time starts on similar day, at least in the online space uh, for the general market and online. Follow service-oriented approach, service and product decoupled from each other, right? 
So what we did, we used uh, service splits. So normally the service splits is the product uh, uh, sprints, right? So they will come with service ID. If we don't get it, sorry. We have a role called business program manager account the information, how we use it. 
who handle the programs, uh, which is being delivered by multiple tracks, right? Otherwise, the alignment doesn't come in. So let's say I have to go uh, uh, something called which we are doing. We are building up a logistics system called uh, DBD, delivered by Tesco, which uh, which cut across all all the system that we have. So we'll have a designated program which will sort of have the track management and taking over. The next level that we do the stream, stream structure and next level is uh, we have some, some amount of overlapping. Uh, so we have dev teams and then the operation which is like uh, DevOps uh, or this is cut out of the dev team. Uh, I think this also is suggested from that. Uh, but we never knew uh, till the time, you know, I, I actually wrote into that, that, you know, uh, that we can take up some capacity from it and support onto it. We have project and portfolio management. We have enterprise architecture team uh, which is lo local and then give the overall architecture roadmap uh, for the teams. We have program management, uh, product ownership and architecture that being supported in the overlap role we have project managers or the business project manager that we said that we take care of it. And then the product owners which is the product ownership team talk to the scrum masters, the business team and they deliver. Right? And, and this integration which is uh, which we say is a scrum of scrum that we do. So, it's fairly complex, right? So that's what I'm saying when we say talk about scaling, right? This is this is this is what you need to have, right? Uh, I mean, in the structured environment, uh, as, as uh, or a framework which you have in say, it, it talks about all of this. Uh, we did it in our own way, and uh, and it gradually evolved, right? It was not like this when we started in 2012. Uh, it gradually evolved, and, and currently we have a similar kind of structure in place. Uh, I just come to the structure that we have. Uh, we have uh, dev uh, application. 7 plus uh, minus 2 or 10 and maximum by 10. We will have dev members, we have scrum masters and have test. We have manual tester and test automation tester. And we have a role which like tech expert or, an, or a technology owner, we have the role of understanding a feature driven team, feature driven team so that we can see the, uh, uh, the requirements properly uh, and talk to the architecture with the solution architecture we share resource. So we have uh, SME or the architect which is shared resource. Uh, somebody asked about it. That. And we have DBA, we have DevOps, and US testers. US testers are primarily used for US preparation, I will tell in the cadence when they come into the picture. But we have UX integrated in the team. Each team would have an UX. Because in the UX, we have a responsive site. It works on all Tire 1 browser and Tire 1 devices. Right? Any questions? Yes? Please. No, so I have not mentioned it over there because. Uh, but I have kept it over here, I have not mentioned it in the PO. But it's pretty much some part of the scrum team, but it's shared again. I mean, we don't have a dedicated PO for part scrum team. It depends if the project is there, he will be dedicated. So this is the group roles that we have. Uh, again, a very integral part of scaling. So we have a product owner management group or ownership group where we have a lead PO, which is, which is so if I say I have an SBU or portfolio of general marketing on there, we will have a lead view where the vision for the under product development that happens for uh, uh, the general marketing online. We have a scrum of scrum happening out of the stream, so there was lead scrum master or a scrum of scrum owner. Yeah. So in case of a scrum of scrum, there yeah. is one scrum of scrum. Yeah. One of one of. He can. He can, but you know, again, as it, it happens, uh, from the overall uh, which we call. Uh, a release train engineer in SAFE, right? I mean, I'm later I can to know about uh, the fact, right? So in Tesco, what we have, it can be in a case where the program is small, but even a bigger program will have a dedicated person because they have to do a lot of tasks in that element. So what this guy, sorry, sorry, go ahead. So what, what can be the other responsibility of this yes. So, yeah, so what he would do is, right, so the business program manager out there that you've seen, right, his work is uh, to align all the business stakeholders in terms of that, apart from the requirements. Right, in terms of when it will go and how the element is happening, how this entire is happening, and how how the product is shaping up. And he will do all the stakeholder alignment and reporting over there. Right? So some of them is normally shared, we can share the resource, but when the project is too instant intense, right, it has to go for almost six months or seven months. He has to align with all this all this team and uh, sort of uh, scale up or you know float up all the impediments, all the things that is coming in, in place from the scrum standpoint. Yeah, stakeholder in, 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 impediment management and the, from the scrum standpoint. Yeah, and release management from the scrum standpoint. This guy will understand more from the business stakeholder management part per se, and he will be from the more product uh, standpoint. 
And, and again, but this rule thread also exists in SAIL in, in somewhere or other. Uh, and, and we can have a predefined name to this particular rule uh, if you look into SAIL. Yeah, sure. Go uh, so sprint and release guidance uh, that we have, so as I mentioned, that these are the programs that we have in Denmark and online. Uh, uh, front office, auto fulfillment, back office. We have strong teams. Uh, we have week one, week two. Some are doing two weekly release, four weekly release. Any uh, point in time you want on demand release, go to the production, we can do it. And this is how, how you how it takes place. That is the release garden that we have. This is how we work in terms of uh, the scrum alignment and everything. So we have. So we have the general product backlog. We have a chief architect who created the architecture and as part of the solution management team, the chief product owner, the scrum teams over here. They have their own backlog in terms of here's our talk of it, we use Jira for it. Then we have uh, the normal sprint going in for all this release. We have retrospective, sprint review, uh, hardening activities. I heard somebody asking yesterday uh, that we do hardening activities. We exactly do when we're about to close with the release, uh, overlapping between week four and week five when the release happens. Then we do a big customer demo, which is a combination of all the uh, sprint review that we have. Right? That is done by again the SOS with the help from the team. So we will get, get a big stakeholder in the room. Uh, it happens in UK, but we contribute from there, then we can go one after another and show it to you. But there yes. will be one demo sprint which is happening for each team. Yes, yes. That, that's what it's here, but when the product is ready for the release, we, we can do it. So who takes part in the demo? So in, in this, we can be, uh, it is driven by the SOS, and but uh, the, tech, uh, the tech leads or the tech expert, not tech lead, I would say, or, or the uh, senior UI, uh, UI resource or the senior testing resource they can take, but whoever is having much more understanding of that particular feature. Is this demo before the same Yes, yeah, before, before you go over, right? before the primary stakeholders. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So what we do is, right, you know, after every two two weeks, as we started, right, we have a potential uh, delivery ready, right? But but we don't. It's not ready in a stage that we can actually take it as a feature. It might not be really uh, ready with the release also. We'll sort of do an elaborative uh, development on it. But there are some US level features or some small features which is ready after the second sprint. If the business wants primary during the Christmas, we can take it like right? that. That we call on demand release. Call it patching, hotfix, and any any, any uh, we can put a hotfix into the production as well. I would say the release in the part of the complete release, but but a small feature of it. Uh, this is uh, the continuous release planning and backlog grooming cadence. So what we do uh, in the week to week, it's, it's small. I would say so. Uh, each as you see the sprint, right? Uh, we have a sort of while we do uh, the daily stand up and event test uh, and and. Uh, Moving forward, in some of the weeks where it's close to the release, we'll see that hardly coming in as a, as a stuff, right? Uh, in, in the other layer, which is like uh, core sprint activities, then we have looking ahead and innovation where we do backlog booming for the next release. Uh, we also do release planning for the next release, uh, well ahead, and then it happens every fortnightly, right? And then the backlog booming moves on. So we spend uh, at an average uh, two to uh, sorry, three to six hours a week for backlog booming, which gives a continuous backlog development, and then we can take it up. Uh, <coughs> well, that's what we do in a backlog grooming uh, continuously. So we have teams or or, or they have at a higher level uh, sort of the program backlog. Uh, they take it to the current release, next release, and the backlog release. Uh, then we agree for an eighty percent commitment and then uh, tie towards it. Uh, this is uh, some example of how the ideation look, uh, ideation uh, stage look, or when the concept comes into our backlog in SharePoint, and then how we tie it in Jira. Uh, this is our, uh, I would say, in a form train uh, that we started following uh, between UK and UK. It's a very visual board where we plan our release. So this is there in both end uh, for the team. Uh, so we daily do a release planning and we start uh, pulling in uh, these caps over there, give a uh, high level estimate at in a t shirt sizing, and, and then uh, plan the release in, in terms of it. Uh, we don't have it as of now, but there's a goal uh, the next year that we want to take where we sort of uh, do the dependency management also. 
this is the ideation activity that we did with Emergent, and uh, we, uh, we I was part of one of the pilot projects which uh, appreciates us to drive. So we now exactly know when we have different states, these are the geo states that we have, right? What we need for that particular state when we say that we're ready for the next state, right? So uh, at a high level, and I mean, it will take some time, but you can share this slide with you there. You can see that what the activity that we say that when we are uh, getting ready for the next release. And another thing that we have implemented after uh, we have been consulted by Merton and we have started uh, following the concept called GFG, which is, uh, which is uh, lean aligned, that we have uh, a full mechanism now. So when, when these things are ready, uh, your, your three curls or your guard will be uh, sitting over here, and then it will pick up at the next phase, and then moving forward. This is a sprint planning board that we use. So we use planning poker now with the going point techniques. And then uh, we sort of uh, do an affinity estimation to further confirm the estimate as agreed by the team. Uh, again, it's a technique we can talk about. Sorry. I just wanted to. Yeah. Because uh, you are already saying the relationship with the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then just affinity. If I finish up here, we'll explain. This is some of the something that work. Uh, we use uh, this kind of KP uh, very regularly. So uh, Paul, so I mean, shouldn't you be using uh, hours when you're going through your sprint planning instead of story points? No, we don't. So we, we do the tasking in hours, but we agree for a story point here. We used to do in hours earlier, right? And uh, so now our, our stories are agreed in terms of story points, in terms of complexity and constraints and other story point factors that we do. But when we do for the tasking, and do take it in the sprint backlog, and then take it for the sprint work, we do the hour, because the tasking is in hour. We, we, do, we now use Jira, I didn't used to do DFS, both the places both the were the main thing. So don't you do tasking in your sprint plan? <coughs>
this in place of the function test environment, they come in here early and then we refresh their code over here and then we still follow the same pattern. So, again, it's pretty much using the same environment and uh, mapped or uh, uh, planned uh, this has been refreshed over there. We also do uh, some of the uh, CI CD practices, not for the optimum level, but the way uh, we do. So, we are developing in the net where we have continuous in integration where we have data check in. Checking test come out, we have static code analysis, and we and so on so on. Continuous delivery, as we have threads in a day, which uh, goes into the environment, we have overnight regression back that goes of the data, and then we take the action in still. Continuous deployment is not in a bit, but it goes in a month, so it's automated now. So we can have parallel activities, and then DevOps the whole level. Uh, so. Challenges, so it's challenging. So alignment between the distributed teams and substance, as you said. How to make all teams work towards the same scenario level and keep in sync. Coordination between the teams. How to have decision making uh, framework in place. How to make teams work. Involving all major stakeholders. Program portfolio management. Team actual teams. We have to spend a lot of training uh, and, and you know prioritization activities out there. Organization simplicity. Make the system simple as possible. That's making complex as well as the framework works. And the scaling infrastructure as you Benefit we achieved uh, more or less. Uh, we move to one month release, uh, somewhere it's like 15 days. Increase the delivery frequency from four, uh, 4 in a year to 10 in a year, now we do 10 releases in a year. 30% to uh, delivery reduction, uh, cost delivery reduction that has averagely happened across the team as an average. Year to year productivity is up by 15%, uh, that's last year alone or now. Development team are more engaged and empowered because we have a very uh, tight group out there, 30% decrease in the product effects. Uh, more than 96 projects, uh, percent project deliver on time and budget compared to 1735 uh, last year. Happy project sponsors, significant improvement, product management, development, high return in user investment and finished work. That's been helped a lot by uh, the green or, or, or the COB that we're doing at this point of time. Uh, okay, I think it's not readable. I'll read it out. So, lesson learned, I think, uh, say that be bold and don't give up. Scaling agenda is complex and tough. Uh, make it happen uh, as a one team. Uh, don't be satisfied and always look forward things to improve. Uh, stick to your principles and trust the teams over creating mandatory process and structure. Right. So team trust, as we talked about in the session, that we have a lot of trust. True success of the scaling agile is staying close to the values and principles. So that's what we try to do over uh, uh, this transformation and change. Uh, we didn't enforce things on Twitter. We did it evolve and then we brought in people. Uh, uh, considered we agree to these values and then uh, they did continuous sessions on agile practices rather than putting in or pumping in the framework and then gradually the team evolved, we did pilot projects and then uh, we did pilot exercise with a smaller team, uh, got one sprint in a bit and then scaled, scaled it up to the multiple teams. So that way I think we are helped a lot by the consistency that we also got. So just wanted to say that agile does work at scale, uh, but with lightweight structure and discipline. Uh, you definitely if you use frameworks, you'll have to add a benefit to it. You'll have a toolkit, you can have the very clarity of it at the very beginning. You can appoint and select and hire people based on those particular goals related to the term structure. But if you have been practicing there for some time, you can scale as well. I mean, it's not needed. Some of this framework or, or uh, the tool that you use out here, uh, when I was, uh, I, I did a session with Mark day uh, before yesterday uh, on that, I found that they are running to uh, that also. So, I mean, that says that is no clear cut framework. We can have multiple. Uh, tools in the box and as and what it works for the team. Some of the team are doing a very high level of agile where we have lean being implemented somewhere in basic basic scrum, some are using XP also to a certain extent, not pair programming, but uh, you know, where we do a pair testing kind of stuff. So that's a mixture of things that we have and then they all we took together and, and, and then with the transformation. So any questions? Uh, I think we are how oh, so much more time? Okay, fine, thank you. Right. So uh, that's how you can reach me at my contact. And uh, any question that you want to ask in particular? Yeah, so I think that's a broader uh, thing I can talk to you about. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, good question. So the big demo day, uh, it's not particularly, the acceptance criteria are verified when we do the sprint, uh, sprint review. Right. Big demo is actually show uh, stakeholders like VPs or other. Uh, see, go no go uh, happens at where we have the screen that you because then you get the screen values in there. It's not go no go, but you know, if a stakeholder doesn't somebody like VP online wants to see what they are delivering in a particular way all across. Uh, 
So I will show you like the gamut of the features that is coming out. It's like a pro work for one hour. I want to see what they are delivering, what value I am giving to the customer. There are, uh, but it would happen much earlier. That's the beauty of agile, right? Like not spending uh, for the entire one release and not effort of so many teams. Yes. Yeah. And, and another thing that is helping us is the big room planning, right? So we get the teams on the TV, right? So it's a virtual uh, planning room where you have TV, everybody log into the virtual room and then you can see each other talking, right? So I have the biggest that we have handled is like we have close to uh, like. 10 or 12 companies, like 100, 120 people. Okay, so everyone is getting involved. All the yeah, not in a single room, though. You know? no, yeah, I yeah, yes, that. absolutely. So yeah, because that's a release really planning. How, how do you control these kind of uh, plans? So that's why the SOS, yeah. in that case, of the complete product, going to become a moderator. So what we do on the particular day is that uh, SOS probably not in that extent, because uh, we, we might select it later. The product owner or the chief architect, right? The product owner will come in and go through the features that that's going into it, and then follow the dependencies in terms of functionality or the or the program things that they will work on. With architecture will talk more about a high level architecture, how it's implemented, what com not component, what kind of module is changing, what not changing, and stuff, right? And then it's it over to the team. So we do that understanding and then get off in a smaller team and do the planning activity and then when I need the dependency to be met and then go back again. So that is the basis of setting the agenda or telling which team will be working on which particular feature and then the So the team yeah the team if it's a feature driven team would know that it will pick it up but there is a lot of pull also. Like I can pitch in that I want to pick on on this activity. Right? So that that's the beauty of uh, the release planning that I can actually pitch in that I can work on this activity but I will know who, which team I have to reach out to. So if I say that I am picking, picking up X and X are dependent on Y, I would know which team is Y picking up and then I can start working often with that particular team to get that work delivered. Any more questions? Please reach uh, Mr. Hackstack Yeah, uh, Yes, and, and, and I think uh, it's a bit uh, from intermediate to advanced topic because I wanted to cover, but don't hesitate to me if you have very basic questions, right? I mean, I'm not just or prioritization, or how do you even start about thinking about agile in a, a startup and environment compared to the last thing? Or if I want to make my team enable with agile, how would I go forward to it? Right? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.